All right, so you just talked to an investor, you got them interested in investing. Now what in the heck do you do and how do you take them from an interested investor to an actual investor? Listen, today I'm gonna to walk you through a nurture sequence, how to create it, how to make sure that you're nurturing the relationship with an investor so that they actually, well, become an investor. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You have a, a conversation with an investor. You do such a great job with your elevator pitch. You freaking nail it. Well, then you don't talk to your investor for months on time, you know, months at a time. And then all of a sudden you get a deal and you're like, okay. You go back to your investor list and the first thing that you've done since you've chatted with that investor months ago is send them a deal and they're like, who the hell are you? And man, they're cold. They're a cold lead. That's the worst thing in the marketing space, in any space, if you're trying to get somebody to man, take action is to get them cold. We need to be warm if we're gonna take action. You get it, that's why we warm up before we go to the gym, as we're at the gym or before we do any strenuous activity. It's no different here. Investing is a strenuous activity. We need to warm them up. Here's how we do it, okay? Listen, once again, my name is Tyler Devereaux. I have been investing in multifamily real estate now for, man, the better part of a decade and have a whole bunch of real estate, a bunch of investors, and have raised a bunch of money. And I'm gonna teach you the same things that I've taught a lot of people. We also have an education company, by the way, called The Multifamily Mindset, where we teach badass people like you how to do, well, what badasses like me do. So, get your pen, paper, note-taking device, whatever you use, let's dive into this, okay? So man, the question, first question that we need to answer is what in the hell is a nurture campaign? What is that? A nurture campaign, in the most simple, basic way that I can tell you, is a series of emails, text messages, videos, webinars, resources, things that you're sending someone to nurture the relationship. The Biggest thing is you're sending them things that are valuable, that are relevant, and that are action-based to continue to help them move towards a goal. That is what a nurture campaign does. It nurtures the relationship for you. So a lead comes in, the goals of your nature of your nurture campaign are really threefold. Number one is to build trust. The more times that they see you, and seeing, meaning not just seeing you physically, I'm saying every time you get an email from me, or your investors get an email from you, they're seeing you. And that's building trust because we trust people that we see regularly and consistently. Number two is to increase your brand awareness. Once again, the more that you can get in front of them, the more aware they are of you. And then number three is to maintain some sort of a connection to keep them warm. So that when you go to send them an email that actually has a deal for them to invest in, man, they're already freaking prepped, ready. Roll. All right, I'm gonna walk you through a six step process on how you build your nurture campaigns. Okay, number one is you need to define the goal. You need to actually define the goal. Like, what is the action or the result that you're looking to get them to at the end of this? What is it? Is it just to build trust? Or is there an action that you're wanting them to take? So many people skip this step. Now, the action certainly you may be thinking is to get them to invest. It may just be to get them to download something though. It could be to get them to attend a webinar. Like you need to understand your nurture campaign and what the end result that you're looking to get them to. So number one is define the goal that you have for your nurture campaign. It's very, very important and then we work from there. Number two is to switch seats. You need to switch seats with this individual. Now you already know your avatar, right? You better have dialed in your avatar. Remember if you don't know how to dial in your avatar, make sure that you click this video here and we talk about how to define your avatar. Now, once you have your avatar though, you need to understand there's different stages that your avatar is in. So what just happened with this avatar for them to click, give you their information, to be in the position that they're in right now? What stage are they in? What are they going through? What questions might they have? What problems might they have? What concerns might they have? What do they, what do they want, right? You need to truly try to picture you, like, like you are that person in that stage and what would be going through your mind. Once again, you need to be able to switch seats with your potential investor so you can understand where they're at. Now, if you're struggling to identify what those questions would be, what those concerns may be, this is where ChatGPT and resources like this are fantastic. Now, I wanna be clear though, you're not going to use ChatGPT to create your content. Why? Because you need to be in, it needs to be in your voice and talking to your avatar uh, from you. Once again, uniquely you. What a great way to use ChatGPT is, is to, man, brainstorm. Different problems, different questions, different things that your current investor may be going through in this specific stage. And then you can create content around there. Okay, so use the tools in the proper way. So then, number three is you need to define their journey. And what I mean by that is they're coming in and you're getting their information at a certain stage of the journey. Now, what email are they gonna get first? 
Or is it gonna be an email? Is it gonna be a video? What are they gonna get first? That first email, where is it gonna send them to? If they engage with that first email, what happens? If they don't engage with that first email, what happens? So you need to define their journey. What comes next after that first email? You've already brainstormed the topics, so you have a whole bunch of these topics, okay? Now you start to place these topics specifically and strategically as to when you would teach them this different topic. Because once again, what's the goal or the goals uh, of your nurture campaign? It's to build trust, provide value. Once again, get them moving and progressing down the direction that you're looking them to go to your end result uh, that we chatted about. So what is the actual process, the flow that you want to walk them through? Okay, map that out. Number four is you're gonna use what I call the wiser framework, the wiser framework to create your content, okay? You're gonna create the content that you're going to be sending as a nurture campaign, and we use the wiser framework to do that. Write this down, okay. W, all right, the W stands for want. What do they want? What are their needs? What do they want? What are they looking to get, right? What is that outcome they're looking to get? You should sure already know that once again because it was in a previous step. The I is the issue. What is the issue? that comes up if they don't get it? What's the problem that happens if they don't get it, right? What's the issue? What is that? What's the negative outcome if they do not get what they want? Now, the S stands for the steps. What are the steps they need to take to be able to get what they want? So a passive investor, what steps do they need to take? Man, they need to determine what they're investing in. They need to determine who they're investing with. They need to determine how to screen a good investment. What steps do they need to take? Once again, the, the clearer that you can make it for them, the easier it is for them, well, to take action with you. The E is what examples can you show them? What case studies can you show them of past deals that maybe you've done? Well, once again, maybe you haven't done a deal, but some of your sponsors or other partners that you're working with, maybe they've done deals. Maybe you can show them a sample deal that a partner has done. Maybe you can show them a sample deal that you've been underwriting. Show them a testimonial of somebody who's done what they're looking to do. Some sort of a proof that, you know, a proof or testimony or case study that can once again drill at home deeper for them. And the R is the result. What's the result? What's the payoff at the end? What are they gonna get? If they go through and they take these steps that you're gonna be walking them through just beautifully in your nurture campaign, what is the result that they will get? They go through, they invest, what's the result? What's the payoff that they're looking for? The content that you're creating should be telling a story. It should be creating a narrative for them. It should be painting this picture. It should be coming more and more real as they go through the process. That's your content creation framework. Once again, what do they need? What's the issue? If they don't get it, what steps do they need to take? What examples can you show? What is the result that they will get when they take the steps that you have so magically uh, and magnificently and beautifully and all those other words that describe great things shown them how to do? So step five, you need to create clear CTAs. CTAs stand for call to actions. What actions do you want them to take? Now, of course you want them to invest, yes but your sub steps that they need to take before they invest, it could be, once again, like we mentioned earlier, download uh, some sort of resource material. It could be attend a webinar. It could be get on a phone call. It could be giving you more information. What steps, smaller steps that they can take to lead to a bigger step. Movement creates movement. You want them to be taking action steps. These smaller steps that you can have them take will lead to a bigger step that you're about to have them Take. You need to clearly define the call to action, the CTAs within your material and where they will be placed within the, once again, the journey that these investors are going through on your nurture campaign. And last but not least, number six is you need to monitor and enhance. You need to monitor and then enhance your nurture campaign. Listen, you're gonna create this thing, it's gonna be beautiful, I have no doubt about it, but you're always learning, you're always improving, you're always changing as you have more data. The more data you get, the more changes, strategic changes you can make. See, right now, you're developing this based off of a theory in your mind. And that's a beautiful theory because you've gotten very granular and specific with who you're targeting, what their needs are, what their concerns are, and how you're gonna solve those problems for them. But now you can see, so things that you should be tracking. Click-through rates, like did they actually click? Did they actually open the email? Did they actually click on certain things within your email? If so, what were those things that they clicked on, right? What was the result that you got from the campaign that you sent them. Did they unsubscribe? Did a lot of people unsubscribe at a certain point? Did a lot of people become uh, non-responsive at a certain point? Once again, the more data you have, the more that you can now pivot and enhance 
to make sure that you're now dictating, once again, the direction that they're going down. Y'all, this is a nurture campaign. If you set this up, I'm telling you that this is how you take an investor who's interested to an investor that's committed. And when I mean committed, I mean they're actually wiring you money to become an investor. Way too many people, man, the problem once again, way too many people have a conversation with an investor and then don't talk to them for months. The next time they talk to them, they're sending them a deal. Remember, the longer that you can delay the ask, the bigger the ask can be. Delaying the ask doesn't mean going silent though. Delaying the ask means dripping them different content to stay relevant and on top of their mind providing value along the way so that they know, like, and trust you. And then, my friend, they will invest with you. Way too many people get so caught up on what they say and how they say it, and yes, that stuff is important. But you know what's more important? Being in front of them, being you, and providing value. You do those things, I promise you that you will raise a lot more money. And the best part is your nurture campaign is doing that while you're doing whatever the hell you decide to do. It works behind the scenes while you are working out in front of the scenes. You don't have to think about it, it thinks about it, and it does it. You create it once, it serves you forever. All right, my friends, hope you found some value from the Nurture Campaign sequence. Man, think about what you've learned. You've learned about how to attract investors, talk to investors. You've learned how to market to your investors, gain their interest, gain, their, gain traction, what your voice is, who your avatar is how to create a nurture campaign for them through this series of raising capital, you are welcome. Now, if you pulled some value from this, which I know you did, especially you, Frank Tashima, because you're the one who asked me how to take an investor that is interested to an investor that is committed. So you better like this, you better share this, and all the rest of you that I'm speaking right to you, do the same, okay? Listen, man, my job, my goal, my dream is to impact you on your journey of multifamily investing, and I'm very grateful that you're here listening to me so that I can help impact you. So if you found some value, share it, make sure you subscribe, and then as always, live always with Aloha. Peace.